Hi guys, it's Lorena at Jagdown Library again. Um, seems like it's been a little bit, but glad to be back. Um, today's craft is based on a tale called the Basi Gallito. Um, it's retold by Lucia M. Gonzalez. Um, it's about a rooster that, and he just likes bossing everybody around. He gets mud on his nose and he wants the grass to wipe it off. The grass won't, so he wants somebody to eat the grass because it wouldn't do that. And it just goes on and on. So, um, but that's uh, what that is. It's a really cute book. So if you get a chance to read it, I would. Um, so our first one will be the kids craft, which is a little rooster made out of a pom-pom. So in the kits, um, if you have the kit, you have a pom-pom in there and then you have some red felt, and a little piece of pipe cleaner and a couple Google eyes and you have your patterns. So I cut out my patterns. I wrote on there like this one, you just need one. The other one you need two. Now when I'm doing my two, I go ahead and just fold the material over and hold it together. And I'm just gonna cut that out. If you weren't able to get one of the kits, you know, most of you probably have either red felt or red paper or something like that that you can do this out of. A little bit of white yarn, you can make a pom-pom by rolling the yarn or wrapping the yarn around a piece of cardboard and then tying it and cutting it and you can get your little pom-pom. Um, I know I'm all out of the kits, so they went really quick. And we'll cut this out here. Yeah, that Basi Gallito, he was pretty honored because he he wanted some he wanted, I think it was a a goat to eat the grass, but it wouldn't do it. And he found a stick. He wanted the stick to hit the goat and the stick wouldn't do it. And then he found some fire, he wanted to burn the stick and it wouldn't do it. He finally gets somebody to help him. And then everybody agrees to do what they need to do to get the mud off his nose so, or his beak. So it, it's kind of a cute little thing. Okay, so I've got two of these now and I have this. Let me move this down a little bit so you can see more of what I'm doing. So I'm going to fold the pipe cleaner in half and kind of pinch it at the end because that's the beak. If you want, well, I'm not going to, but you could bend that up a little if you wanted, but I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm just going to stick it right in there. So let me try to you can do the tacky glue if you want to. For this, I'm gonna use hot glue. So I'm gonna put a little bit on here. And I'm gonna put that right down into the pom-pom. And you can kind of move the yarn around wherever you want it. Be careful with the eyes because you don't want to get burned. And watch, that's what I'm going to do because I told you not to, right? So put the eyes on there. I always feel like I have spider webs with the hot glue. Yep, I did hit my finger. There we go. You could also do a snowman like that, huh? So now going to glue these on. And I just put some at the top. You don't have to have it on the whole thing. And I'm going to glue that on there. This one I'm going to kind of give them a little bit of a part if I can. Put another glue stick in. Okay. So you notice a little curve there. So that curve is going to kind of run along 
the pom pom there a little bit. If you need to trim it a little more, you can to make it set flatter, but should be pretty close. Put some glue on here. Like I said, if you're working with the kids on this, you could use the tacky glue. It just might take a little bit longer to hold, but we don't want to burn anybody. And there is your little rooster. Okay, now the thing is too, as I said, you can make your own little pom-poms. Now you have your pattern here too, so you could hold on to that. You can make a whole bunch of different pom-poms. Uh, chickens, I mean, sorry about that. One year, I did a whole bunch of different pom-pom uh, animals. So you can do all sorts of things with pom-poms. I did yellow, I did chicks, I think I did a shark, I did frogs, turtles, all, sort, all sorts of things with those pom-poms. So the next one we have, this one is going to be a little bit harder. So that's why I have the tray here. And I'm going to put a piece of paper down here. I have it kind of folded in the center because I'm going to need to be using that later. Um, so our rooster is the sand painting. Okay. This one's a little bit more time consuming. Uh, so more for adult or older kids. I made a stencil of the rooster. So you can see it's all cut out there. And I set it over and I traced. So you all have a tracing on a piece of cardboard or cardstock, something. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. So what I'm going to do, each of you also have a little cup with glue and a little cup with black sand. I'm doing just one color um, for this one just because when you go to doing different colors, you have to be kind of careful how you put them together because they'll kind of fall on another color and it might change that color just a little bit. So what I do is I work on one spot at a time and I'm going to move this and it's really hard to see the lines I know, but I'm going to take a small paintbrush and then I'm going to start here on his comb and I'm just going to put a bunch of glue in here. Just try to follow inside the lines. You don't want it too thin, but you don't want it gob down there either. So just kind of, you just want to make sure it's wet because you want to make sure it holds that sand when you put that on there. And I do a little bit at a time because I don't want the glue to dry before I can get to the next part. And it looks kind of funny sometimes if you stop and start again. So like if I was to do half of this and then come back and do the other half, you kind of could see a little bit of a line. So you kind of don't want to do that. So let me see if I've got enough glue on here now. I'm going to set that down and I'm going to take, make sure I have my paper underneath. I'm going to pour the sand on top of where I have the glue. And I'm gonna gently tap, I mean, I'm barely pushing on it, just enough to kind of get it to, so I'm gonna lift the board up and tap it down onto the, and you can also take and go like that. So you can take off any that might be stuck on there, but there's your first part. I have the fold there so I can take and I'm going to dump it right back into the cup. Need a little bit of a mess, but now right here I've got a few little spots. And so I may do at least four or five of these little ones at one time. Just because they're tiny enough. So. Yeah, you can do all sorts of uh, things with the sand art. It's, it's pretty cool. 
I've done a wolf Mandela type thing, and we've done some outdoor scenes and stuff like that. So. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Once again, I'm going to pour over everything I just glued. Gently tap it down. Tip it over. Okay. Now you're probably going to come to a point you're going to be like, I don't need to sit here and listen to you anymore. So that's okay too if you do that. But just kind of getting this all in there. I tell you, I'm not ready for all this heat that we're having though. It's supposed to be another hot one today. Now I'm going to do two of these little sections. I get impatient, so you can do them one at a time or... If you've got a lot of uh, air or wind blowing on it, you want to do it a little bit at a time. Okay. I'm going to pour over those. And that's what I like about this is you can uh, just pour a whole bunch on because you can reuse it. When you go to doing different colors, it gets a little bit more complicated. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll do one color first. That way I don't get my sand all mixed different colors together. I'm trying to remember if I found out if you do, I think you want to do the dark colors first, if I was thinking right. That way, when you go to do the light color, you don't have the dark going on later to cover the light. If the light kind of gets on the dark, you can still see the dark through it. So you just be careful as you're doing it. You could even let it dry longer. You could seal it with something, and that would probably help it keep from uh, sticking on the other one, too. And you could take these and frame these if you wanted to. Have them on your wall, give them as a gift. I mean, if you know somebody that likes roosters, that would be a cute one. But doing some of the other ones... Um, you could do a lot of different stuff. There's, you could do clocks, take some wood and do a design on a clock and, and glue the sand on there and seal it. And then there's some pretty cool designs. All depends on what you like in your house. I like working with sand a lot better than glitter because glitter sticks to everything. Sand does pretty good. I'm going to move my cup a little closer because I've got this bigger spot that I'm going to be doing. So. Just want to kind of keep the lines in between so you can have the detail of your rooster. Now next month, uh, the first one I'll be doing 
will be Mufaro's beautiful daughters. And it's kind of a African-American Cinderella type story. And we'll have a little wire snake for the kids and a paper folding uh, flower craft uh, for the older. It's really kind of pretty, but takes a little bit more detail to it, so. And then the last one I'll be doing for the summer will be the towards the end of July, and that'll be Poppin. And we'll have Babe the Blue Ox, and we'll have the Grand Canyon in a jar. have a few little spots here. I could take my brush and I dipped it in the sand. I don't want to do that. Put a little bit right in there. And then sprinkle some sand in it. And you can even do that when you get done with the whole thing if you see a bunch of different spots. But Alrighty. You notice I'm not going all over the place. I'm trying to work in areas that way the sand doesn't, you know, I don't stick my fingers in anything, hopefully. Uh, so now I'm going to work on these lines here and I'll go down here and then I'll start up here and work down or I'll start from here and work out. Most likely up and down. <clears throat> Now, I didn't rub a lot of it off on that one, so I had to kind of start in a little bit on the bigger one so I didn't get glue outside my lines. And you don't have to be like perfect, perfect on it, but you're going to want to try to keep it as much in the lines as you can. So now that was crafting, you can't can't really go wrong. You just everybody has their own style. So, and you know what? I could do twenty-five of these, and all twenty-five are probably going to have a little bit different things to them. So, Those little toes are going to be a little bit harder to do, but we're going to work on these next, and then we'll work on the other part. Actually, I'm going to do all of this at the same time here. Like I said, you can take more time if you want. This is probably the second or third one I've done like this, so, of the rooster.
I do have some cute crafts coming up in the fall. So hopefully you'll kind of stick with this and we're going to try to do some of them in person, but I think I'm still going to do some kits. So we just may not have it virtual. So it all depends on what happens. So yeah, I'm gonna start up here. This tail feather here. Tell you, roosters can be mean animals. I've seen some that are nice, but man, I grew up with some that were not the very nicest of creatures. Now, I probably just goofed up here, but I'm doing both of these feathers, so Hopefully, if that little one gets dried up a little bit, I can add more glue to it. Uh, yeah, sometimes things like this make it easier to deal with things in life, right? Having something to do creative can be therapeutic. You never know what life's going to throw at you next. I guess I should have told you the the glue I'm using is a mix of tacky glue and water. You could do Mod Podge if you wanted, but we had tacky glue and we got water, so it was just as easy to do it this way. And I just kind of thinned it up, um, but it's still kind of thick enough where it barely drops off of the, the paintbrush. But you can do that with your tacky glue and I don't know if it would work with Elmer's glue, but I suppose you could try it. I just, my old standby is tacky glue. For one more. I know it's kind of hard to see, but if you're looking at your picture, you kind of know what I'm doing. So if anyone out there didn't get the kit and they want the stencil, just let me know and I can maybe draw it out and you can cut it and because I still have my stencil. You 
You can also draw the picture onto a board. That's what I did with some of the other ones. The stencil worked better with the rooster just because of the way he's made. Having all the lines in between, it was better to have. It was better to have that. I'm gonna take a little dot here. Because I'm missing a little tiny bit right here. And a little bit up here. We're getting there. We've almost got it. And I'm just using like some butcher paper or something like that. You could use whatever paper. And whatever direction feels more comfortable comfortable for you to work, you could work whichever direction. I just knew it because my hand goes here, I didn't want to have sand over there. But if you're left-handed, of course, you probably want to go the other direction. Now, the sand, you can get it, like, I think you can even get it at Walmart. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, probably Joann's. Um, we ordered ours from Amazon. And got a bunch of different colors. I had a lot of black and I thought one color would probably be the best on this. But I guess if you think of it, black is a mix of all colors. So you've got a mix of colors in there. Because white is the absence and black has all. I did an experiment one time and I took I think it was a piece of tissue, and I took a, a marker, not one of the washable kind, but uh, just take like a regular marker, and you put a mark on it, and then you set the end of the tissue where there's no mark into the water, and as it moves, the Black will run and it'll show all the different colors that are in, in that. So it's kind of cool. We are almost there. I'm going to do all these little ones that are in here and then I'll save this big one for last. Sorry, I'm so quiet. I'm almost got that. There we go. Well, if you had a really simple design, it'd probably be pretty easy to work with your kids and have them do something. It'd be kind of cool. And one more spot.
And I love it because we don't waste that much sand. We waste a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. And when we do the Grand Canyon in the jar, we'll use the same kind of paste made with the, the glue in the water to glue the picture in the jar. Now I'm changing in July, I'm having where you can pick up the kit during the class that I do in person, or you can pick up the kit after if I have leftovers. And I think I have like 20 or 25 of the other kits, so. spot here where I have some pencil lines showing. And then using the tacky glue and the water, you just rinse your brush out and, and water and you're good. So there's the rooster. So see how simple that is? A couple simple crafts would be easy to do. Like I said, you could work with your kids on some of it if you wanted to. Um, once again, thanks for joining me, and hopefully I will see you next time. Um, it will be in person if you can make it. We'll talk to you later. Bye.